Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, lovely people. How are you doing on this chilly morning? Uh, what is it? It's Tuesday, the 6th of April, 2021. This is your Yoga Solutions Live. I am Mark J. Aquaviva. And um, yes. <clears throat> so, um, yes, I got a question today, um, which is which is good. So that's the point of these sessions is, um, you know, I, I have I do have solutions for all the uh, all the things that um, well, I can't say all because I haven't necessarily <laughs> had all problems, but um, uh, I, I do have solutions for uh, and, and direct solutions that I've worked out for myself for, for many, many, many of the common issues in yoga practice that people um, butt up against when they're going through their, their practice life. And um, so it, uh, I don't know, it's an imperative for me to be able to share this with other people. Now, obviously I do this with my teaching. Uh, if, people, if someone chooses to come and work with me, then, um, and of course, I, uh, <laughs> that, that's where I get to share it. But um, I don't know, the, the, the general idea of um, how these solutions work is more an overall principle that involves a, a shift of perspective in terms of how we how we uh, relate to the body and how we relate to physicality. Um, that that is the answer, um, and and there is precision about that. You know, the the way we think of the body in the West, it tends to be the mind um, in charge of the body. Uh, with the idea that the intellect understands how to do stuff to the body for it to work better. Um, <clears throat> it's the wrong way around. It, it, um, it, it's, it's perfectly uh, useful to, to understand uh, some of the mechanics of the body and how, and how various parts of it work in terms of um, you know, what muscles do and things like that. It can be useful, but how we go about um improving the relationships that we have between parts of ourselves uh, turns out to be in a, a direct result well the the way <laughs> the way these complications turned out in the first place is because the person that lives in the body has ways of doing things has ways of engaging with the world of uh, being in life of occupying space that leads to distortions and imbalances that the that the body complains about. So it's the person, it's the intellect uh, that put those things in the uh, in place in the first place. And you know, I'm not blaming anyone. It's uh, you no know, fact of life. Uh, that those things came around through through history and other things, um, which you can't do anything about. Uh, you can you know the past is the past, but uh, the 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 way to go around the way to go about solving the issues is to turn it on its head it's, it's not the mind doing stuff to the body which um can seem like an impossible concept to to get across in some ways because we we all identify with our minds with our thinking minds but um we are our bodies we are our bodies as well, and uh, the, the the solution to all issues is in that originating source of the problem, which is how we interact with the world beneath us and the space that we occupy, the quality of those things. And, you know, the, the way that came about in the first place was a function of our lives, our life story, and um, whatever insults and injuries that came along the way will have caused distortions from the outside. But the it's uh, the, the distortions didn't happen because of the out, what happened on the outside. They they happened because of our responses, the way we responded at the time, and all very understandable. And you've got to have compassion for yourself in in these things. But um, the, the so the solution lies in looking at how we interact with the world and the space that we occupy. And I'm not talking about airy fairy sort of ideas of uh, quality of um, you know what your morals are and other things. I'm talking about direct, practical, 
um, sensory in, sensory impressions of how you support yourself, how, how you interact with this surface that we use for purchase when we're trying to move, when we're trying to support ourselves, how you <clears throat> literally occupy the space around you uh, through the breath and its release. And uh, moreover, your relationship to between above and below. You know, what, what, what you, how you, um, your experience of that will um, vary between um, I have to hold myself up as an idea that you live with um, to gravity is this thing that um, bears down upon me and therefore, and, and it will succeed and make me collapse eventually. So therefore, there, that, that might be why you have to hold yourself up, you know. Um, all these ideas are at the source of the physical outcome of being and breathing and moving and doing stuff with these ideas in the background, running things. So uh, <clears throat> it, uh, the, the solutions that I offer, um, <clears throat> well, the, you know, changing a mind in that way is a, is a very big job it takes uh, practice but you, the, the, the way you do it is through evidence you know um, if, you, if you can change the quality of your actions and witness that the outcome the somatic experience of the outcome has changed for you then that gives you a reason to carry on practicing in, the, in that way where you're um, measuring the quality of what you're doing directly through sensory impressions rather than based on ideas that, you know, through sensory impressions, you get, you get to at least stand a chance of listening to how the body um, wants to do things. Uh, <clears throat> through intellectual, intellectual concepts, you start with an idea that you, you that makes sense to you, and, <clears throat> and then you go about doing things in a way that follows that idea. And whatever you experience on a somatic level, you will try and match up with the idea to corroborate it. So it, it's more than likely to be a red herring <laughs> because uh, uh, whatever, whatever you do, you will believe that the outcome you're having is either <clears throat> because uh, you haven't done it, it enough yet, if it's not a pleasant outcome, um, or because you got it right, if it is a, is a pleasant outcome. And all of it is a function of the intellect rather than simply seeing what is and doing it better. You know. <clears throat> anyway, that was that was quite a rant. Um, that wasn't what, what I was intending. But uh, yeah, uh, w what I'm trying to say is there are very there are solutions to all the common things because uh, um, again, the way most people think is the body tends to wear out and it goes wrong. And if, if I have a knee problem, and someone else doesn't have a knee problem. It's because my knee is dodgy and that other person's knee isn't dodgy. It's not. Um, the, the, the reason you have that knee problem is because of the way you interact with the world, it causes the knee to have a problem. And uh, it, changing the way you interact with the world will take away that problem and allow the body, which is incredibly uh, amazing uh, thing in terms of self-repair, if you take away the actual issue, which is the way you interact in, with the world, um, uh, the, uh, to cause a knee problem, then the, the body has the space to heal the knee. And um, the question I had today was uh, around the sacro... Uh, the question was, uh, I think it's from Caroline, someone. Uh, thank you, Caroline, for your question. The, the question was how to support the sacroiliac joint, I think. Um, so there's, uh, therein, in, the, in that question lies the issue. How do I support the sacroiliac joint? Okay, so what, what is a joint? It's a junction between two bones uh, that is either um, uh, purely for support in that um, it, it, um, it has no mobility, which is highly unlikely there's, there's only a few there's very there's no joints that don't have some mobility otherwise um, they wouldn't be joints they would be straight through bones um, so the question is how do I support 
the sacroiliac joint. Where the joint is a point of support that is supposed to allow mobility. And um, the idea of supporting the joint is the idea that it is mobile and it shouldn't be, and therefore I have to hold it. So that, that would be uh, an imposition on the sacroiliac joint that might stop it from being painful, but it will restrict its function. So its function diminishes. And, uh, and, and the, the, one, of the, one of the mobilities of the sacroiliac joint is to allow your, your pelvis to, to move in a, in a sort of bilateral way as you, as you walk. And without that, you end up with the um, sort of, well, you end up with a lumbering walk where you have to carry your weight. So it's a, it's a really important joint to allow to be mobile. And if you have to support it, then that's the idea of fixing tension around it. What the question is based on is discomfort, probably, as in my sacroiliac joint feels sore. So how do I solve that problem? Um, well, let, let's, let's uh, I, I seem to be drifting into educating this morning and that's not my favorite direction. Um, I, I like practical solutions. So let's see, um, sacroiliac joint. Uh, let me get my spine out one second. Apologies for the break. Here we go. Oh. There is my plastic spine. And here's a, here's a pelvis. And uh, like, like I was saying, the, um, you know, the, the pelvis is a two-boned joint. It's got two halves to it, like the shoulder girdle does. And um, it pivots at the pubic, pubic symphysis there. And um, it doesn't have to have big movement, but it does have to have movement. Um, so when you're walking, these things move in the, sort of independently of each other, but in harmony. As, a, as opposed to the thing being fixed and, you know, moving like that. If, if you want to have a natural relationship, that, that, that's what needs to happen. And where does, where does the sacrum live within that? So here's the iliac crest, here's the sacrum, so that's the sacroiliac joint. Um, and the sacrum lives inside of that thing. Okay, it lives inside of the pelvis. And um, it is, yes, it is supported from underneath, but the question, how do I support the sacroiliac joint would be, how do I hold this thing together? And the, 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 it beggars the question, why would, why would this thing need to be held together? Because it, it is a joint, and, I, and joints are for getting forces of support to travel through. So if your sacrum is sitting inside that thing, it, the answer is the way you use your legs, which come up into the pelvis from underneath, the way you use your legs, the way you use your feet, the way you interact with the earth, needs to cause support to travel up into underneath the sacrum and from there through the spine as opposed to the weight bearing down upon the sacroiliac joint and this is what happens if you're not interacting with the earth if you're trying to be passive um, and expect to be supported if, if you're not interacting with the earth what happens is instead of the forces of support uh, traveling up through the bones your weight, your fluid weight, the weight of the organs uh, will hang off the spine and the, sp and the gravity will have the effect of bearing down upon the curves of the spine, which will make the um, angles uh, at the sacro uh, lumbar junction um, bear weight, which will be squishing down against the sacrum within the pelvis, and the pelvis will then be heavy and uh, etc. You know, um, so so you'll you will feel unsupported, 
around the sacrum because you're trying to put your weight against the junk. It's uh, where it joins to the to the lumbar spine, and the the um, this this joint. If you look at the angles of it, the way the sacrum sits on that, um, the weight falling down doesn't give it support. What gives it support is when you interact with the earth from below, and those forces travel up through the bones, through the joints, and including through the sacroiliac joint. So what is that? Uh, I'm still educating. It's not what I... Um, well, I suppose it's important because the mind has to, has to join in with this, with this change, doesn't it? So what can, what can we do to explore that? Uh, well, the, 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 the most common thing that we do that will um, lead to a sense of the sacrum needing supporting, sacroiliac joint needing supporting, is standing. But um, <clears throat> it's rife with the complications of, of, uh, that arise from non-engagement with contact and space. Uh, so so there'll, there'll be a little bit too much to deal with, to be able to understand uh, somatically, to be able to feel the answer. So, <clears throat> gosh, I've nearly run out of time. But a way of exploring this is to um, find a standing relationship through the feet where, where um, you're not needing to hold yourself up with your back or any other uh, part of your spine. So lying down. But... Um, we, we can explore standing, lying down. Uh, obviously, the knees are bent, but you can still play with how you use your feet in terms of how you interact with the world underneath the feet, you know, how, how, you, how you use your feet to feel supported, um, so that we can explore the, the, the relationships of support from the feet through the pelvis into the sacrum from behind which is uh, how you get the idea of the sacrum being supported. Okay, so if we just arrive at no flat back, please, because that, that's not what will happen when you stand. So uh, not without an, all, an inordinate amount of tension anyway. So if you arrive on the fronts of the feet, that, that's the, the part of your foot that um, kind of responds proprioceptively to support. And giving the job to the front of the feet is uh, part of what starts to wake up the natural responsiveness to contact. Putting on the heels will make you put your weight down. So start on the front of the feet with the pelvis light and the job is to relax around the pelvis. So there's no, there's no sense of... Um, just having weight on the fronts of the feet and picking the pelvis up. It's not that. You, of course you can do that. But the point is to find support from your contact. So the knees travel over the fronts of the feet and then you use the feet to support the pelvis. So the pelvis needs to feel relaxed and the, base, and the spine needs to feel relaxed. I don't want you lifting your spine um, directly. So how, how, do, how do you... How do you know that the spine is not holding your weight? Well, um, when you breathe, if you have to, if you're lifting, that will happen. Your belly will fill up because your back is busy holding you up. If you are supported by your touch, which involves you interacting with the world through the feet, not just being heavy on them, so it's down through the feet and a little bit of out through your toes is a description of proprioceptive responses to support, then that structural support means that you can relax and breathe into your back. So the outcome is the belly remains relatively quiet. And when you, and you get the feeling of the back floating on the breath, the pelvis floating on the breath, so there's no holding happening. And then when you release the breath, obviously the belly empties, which is obvious lying down, but when you stand, it's not. That's, the, that's one of the problems. So uh, what we can do is, in the adding of the heels, because we do stand on the whole of the feet, 
Take a, take a breath into your back. Have your hands on your belly in the lower half. Take a breath into your back. And when you, as you release the breath, feel the belly drop. Now connect that dropping belly to extending the heels down away from you. Not, not dropping them, but using the purchase of the fronts of the feet to kind of reach for the ground with the heels. And obviously what that will do, if you've got another hand behind you, that will, that will send the um, sacrum forwards through the pelvis because the pelvis will get involved with wrapping around the sacrum from behind. So I'll take you through that again. Weight over the fronts of the feet. Let the knees travel there. Use your feet for support, pressing down through the fronts of the feet. Take a breath into your back with relaxed buttocks. And then as you release the breath and the belly drops, that is a core response. So you might find some, the core working as you use that to send the heels down away from you, which will cause also the pelvis to kind of wrap around the sacrum from behind. So the sacrum will be within the pelvis supported. That's how you do it from your touch, you see? Now, there will be other efforts. You'll feel your thighs working and stuff. So one more time. Fronts of the feet, knees over them. The use of the feet. Most people don't really bother touching the ground with the feet. So bring the balls of the feet onto the ground, the base of the big toe, and you might need to bring your knees together to make that happen. But then lift the little toe side. That's the act of touching the ground with the ball of the foot. Okay, so you bring the ball of the foot to the ground and lift the little toe side, and that'll be the outer ankle. Then to bring the knees back into alignment, you use the purchase of the ball of the foot to try and kind of widen the space between the thighs. Now, it's, I'm not just talking about that. There's a, as it, you kind of use an imaginary surface to widen against, and that will cause the muscles around the uh, top of the femoral heads, the thigh bones, to anchor around with their lo local rotator muscles to help get hold of the pelvis and turn it inside out so that the sacrum is sent forwards within it and that goes with the heels um, reaching the ground provided the fronts of the feet are still supporting you so in a touch widen and the thigh the outer thighs can do that do all of that with the release of the breath so if you start on the balls of the feet breathing into your back so the spine is relaxed. And then as you release the breath, lower belly to the balls of the feet, widen and use that purchase to turn the pelvis inside out until the heels touch the ground. When the heels are touching the ground, you've done a lot of work to get there. Now the job is to relax into the structure of it. You've moved the structure with effort. You don't have to hold on to that structure. So the next job is to land on those responsive feet and relax to breathe. So your back continues to feel relaxed. And then when you release the breath within you away from that, you can leave your feet behind and the emptying of the breath within you will be the cause of movement and the spine will still be within the pelvis. One more time, land on the feet to breathe so your back can relax. And then as you release the breath, there's this same responsive kind of touch that you rest into as you release away from it on the inside. And within that rhythm, the sacrum is no longer something you need to support. The sacrum itself, being through the pelvis, is communicating directly to the heels. So it's like the spine itself is standing on the feet. So, um, yes, I've gone over time a little bit. So there you go.
uh, a shift of perspective, turn it around. It's, uh, the sacrum isn't the thing that needs to be supported. You, um, well, it, it needs to be supported through your bones, through your joints. But then when you get that support and you don't have to hold it locally with effort, which is the usual idea of what support is, when you can let go of that effort because uh, forces of support are traveling through the joints into the bone itself, then the sacrum and, and at the end of the spine itself can communicate through those bones to contact. And so you move from the sacrum within the pelvis rather than having to support it. So the whole thing turns inside out. And um, the outcome, if you if you if you were watching this, Caroline, and you and you practiced it, um, it might have been a lot of work for other parts of you. You would have found new um, muscles around the outside of the uh, hips. You would have found uh, a lot of effort in the uh, the deep toe muscles that run along the inside of the legs because your feet would have been strong. Uh, you would have woken up a lot of core responses that a lot of people misinterpret as tension. Um, and the whole thing will have been powered by the breath. And I'm not talking about just taking a breath and then falling out. The, the breathing action itself would have become the source of your support. Uh, the outcome should be, if you practice with me, that uh, all of those efforts, all those things that you did, will have left the sacrum quite happy. And actually... Um, rather than being something that needs supported, it becomes part of you that does the supporting, that, that, that connects to the ground directly. Okay, so uh, I hope that was useful. I hope that was interesting. Feel free to share it around Facebook um, whilst I leave it up. I, I, I transfer it to the Equiviva website for my uh, premium members. Um, and there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, on all subjects so feel free to if you want to um, browse through them and see what I've got on offer uh, you can sign up for a free trial I think it's a whole month so um, or a couple of weeks at least anyway sign up for a free trial uh, a silver membership uh, it's only it's less than a ten or a month anyway and uh, you also get access to my um, ultimate deep relaxation course which is uh, uh, 15, 20 or so uh, guided deep relaxations with different sort of purposes and centers. Um, yes, yeah, so you can do that. Uh, what else can you do? You can, you can, um, oh, come along. I've, I've got a, I've got some workshops coming up. I'm doing one for, um, is it this week? I can't remember. Yes, I, I think I'm doing one this Saturday. Uh, one of my Saturday morning retreats. They, uh, places tend to go quite fast. You can, drop in for an interactive place. It's a two-hour two workshop and a gentle sort of dynamic flow of sorts, but gentle. Dynamic, it does not mean push yourself about. Um, that is appropriate for every, anyone uh, from a seasoned expert to uh, to beginner because uh, cause what I work with is these sort of broad principles that you can apply to whatever de degree of detail that is appropriate for you, you see. Um, that's this Saturday, um, and yes, you can also get a view-only place for half price. And the following weekend, I am doing a full uh, CPD weekend for Yoga Scotland. Um, it's two days around um, a principle-based practice. Uh, and uh, it, you don't have to be a Yoga Scotland member to, to join that. So um, yeah, it's going to be a worthwhile workshop if you, if you want to dive deep into a new experience. Uh, as well next Saturday actually so uh, yeah come along to something and uh, I've got I've got regular classes I've, I've got one um, shortly actually at half past 11 I do one on the Monday evening that's a bit more intermediate and um, I've got another one tomorrow at 11 as well so come along to something uh, just uh, join the website there's a little, there's some free stuff on the blog as well I've got a few workshops and a few little snippets of uh, hints on various postures and and uh, sort of general pontification videos around around the nature of yoga and um, the apl application of yoga to life so um, yes uh, sign up to the website and uh, get some free stuff all right that'll do from me um, yes i hope that was useful much love to you all 
I'm Mark J. Aquaviva. This has been your Yoga Solutions Live. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Bye now.